Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my first update for the Partners in Cream Collaboration Project Pan. This is a collaborative project pan where we're focusing on anywhere between three to five products that are liquid or cream. Basically anything that isn't a powder is fair game for this project. And I was so upset that I skipped out on this project back in 2020, so I'm so happy to be doing it this year. This was started by Dylan and Steph. Both of their channels will be linked down in the description box of this video, of course. I absolutely love both of their channels and highly recommend them so, so much. They're both amazing creators. I watch both of their uploads, like every single one of their uploads. I just love them so much. They're both so sweet and so fun. And yeah, definitely go check them out if you haven't already. If you're interested in seeing more content in this project pan, there is a playlist down in the description box as well. And you can always check out this project over on Instagram with the hashtag partners in cream 2021. So let's just hop on into all of the progress that I've made so far over this past month. I'm feeling very motivated and really excited to continue with this project. I cannot wait to watch other people's videos, but for now, let's just hop on into the progress I've made over the month of January. Let's kick it off with this product right here. This is by Milk. This is the matte bronzer in the shade Baked. This is a beautiful cream bronzer, but unfortunately it only comes in two shades. And there is just so, so much product in this. I'm gonna have this in my collection for absolutely forever. So I had to throw it into this project because although I don't want to recommend it, the shade range is just not inclusive enough. It's just not expansive enough, but I do love it and it is something that's gonna last me forever and ever and ever. So I set myself a goal of using this 50 times in this project. I thought that way I could actually see some usage on it because it really is a product that you need very, very little of. I am wearing it today, but I am wearing a powder bronzer and like a bronzy kind of illuminator on top. So you can't really distinguish what this looks like on me personally, but I have used it. 16 times in this first month of this project. So I'm really, really happy with that number. I'm feeling very, very motivated to continue to use this. And I foresee that I should be able to get this out of this project within like the first quarter of this year. This is what it looks like on my skin unblended. And then when you blend it in, it just becomes like beautiful bronze skin on me personally, like on my complexion. It just looks so effortless and so natural. I really do enjoy it so that 16 uses was not a chore whatsoever. But like I said, it's not really something I recommend. If you do have this in your collection, I definitely recommend pulling it out and getting use out of it because it will never ever run out. But it's not really something that I would recommend that other people pick up per se because it may be hard to find the right tone for you. This just happens to work really well for my personal coloring and my personal taste. 16 uses though, which is great. I really did enjoy using it over those 16 uses and I'm looking forward to a couple more months of focusing on this in this project, but I will not be rolling it out quite yet. And this next product that I've been focusing on is the ColourPop Luxe Lipstick in the shade Tiptoe. And I know it looks like a super shock shadow because I have decanted it into here, trying to use up every last bit of the product. So once the bullet could no longer like apply easily to the lips, I put it into this pan right here. And there was so much product left in here, like so, so, so much product left in here. I've been using it for the past month and I feel like I haven't made a huge dent in it, but I have been wearing it so much. Today I'm wearing it as the only blush that I have on. I didn't top it off with a powder blush, but I do really like to use it as like a base blush or as a standalone blush. And I've been absolutely loving that the, the way that this looks on my cheeks. I do love the way that it looks on my lips as well, and that's how I had used it in the past, but now that I've put it into this pot, I've kind of like reimagined it, and now I want to only use it as a blush, and I'm so sorry about the lighting. And there is a swatch of it blended out, so as you can see, it just is this perfect like pink mauve kind of blush shade for me personally. It is so beautiful. I do wear it as a lipstick occasionally, but I'm really enjoying using it as a blush. And even though I anticipate it is gonna take me several more months to work my way through this, my goal is to finish it off. I don't see that being a problem whatsoever. And it's so funny that I say that now because when I was working on this actually as a bullet lipstick in my 20 favorites in 2020 project pan, I said the exact same sentiment where I was like, even though this is gonna take me forever to reach my goal on, I don't care because I really enjoy it. And now I'm, I'm reimagining it in a different context and I'm feeling the same way about this product even still. So I absolutely love it. It is a very versatile product. Unfortunately, it is discontinued, but it is so beautiful and it has been so much fun. And I definitely recommend if you have like a nude lipstick that you absolutely love, 
turn it into a cream blush when you can no longer apply it to the lips with ease. It is so fun and it's so great and I just feel like it has been such a treat and a really great way to reimagine my products. Another product from ColourPop, this is actually a super shock. <laughs> another ColourPop, another product from ColourPop, this is actually a super, why is that so hard? Here's another product from ColourPop. This is actually a super shock shadow. This is in the shade Crimper, which is a beautiful metallic kind of flaky light gold shade. I've used a lot of this. Unfortunately, I haven't looked back on the pictures, but I foresee that if I like compare the two, I'll have them here on the screen. There actually is a decent amount of progress that I've made in this product over this past month because I've used it so, so much. Today I'm wearing it on my inner corner. I've been wearing it very frequently like that. Sometimes I wear it as a brow bone highlight or all over the lids. And I have actually been wearing it as a highlighter today. I have it on as a highlighter just here on the very top of my cheekbones, um, up around my temples. And although in real life, like up, up close, it does look a little bit apparent because it is more of a flaky kind of metallic. I feel like on camera and honestly from a distance, it really doesn't look too, too stark. I was a little weary that this might be a little bit too deep for me because this is more of a golden tone, but honestly, it is so nice as a highlight and I've really, really enjoyed wearing it this way. I love, I love using products in different ways than how they're originally marketed. And it allows me to make some really great progress on this using it in a larger surface area. So I haven't reached my goal of using this up quite yet, but as you can see, there really isn't a ton of product left in here and it is going to last me maybe two more months which I'm totally cool with because it's so versatile. I can use it in so many different ways and integrate it into like hundreds of different looks. So I am not mad at it whatsoever. And as you can see, I've just swatched it there. It's just this beautiful sheen. And from a distance, again, it just looks like that sheen, but up close there is that little bit of flake which adds some dimension and I just feel like it is really, really beautiful. And it's not yet drying out, which is shocking because I've had this for absolutely ages, like over five years I've had this in my collection and it still is functioning very well and I'm super impressed with it and really enjoying having it in this project as well. Next up, I have a concealer that I've been focusing on. This is the Catrice Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. I have mine in the shade 05 Light Natural. I always get tripped up that the number is on the lid, by the way. If anybody else has this concealer, let me know. Do you like ever go to reference the shade and you like are looking on the bottom, looking all around the tube, and then you realize it's on the top. I do that every time I look at this product, but that's besides the point. So my goal with this is to finish this off. It is a bit of a challenge because it's not quite the right shade for me. I said that in the introduction that it is a little bit too light for my personal preferences and for my skin tone just in general. I feel like it is maybe a touch too highlighting to the point where it actually can be detrimental but I've been wearing this very, very often and I have made really great progress. So I started up here, I'm down to about here. So this I think will take me about two more months to actually use off, especially since I want to take out the stopper. But lately I've just been using this primarily as an eyeshadow primer, not exclusively, but oftentimes as an eyeshadow primer. And then sometimes I'll mix it in with other complexion and base products. So. Most often I've been mixing this with my Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue because the shade that I've been trying to use up is a little bit too deep. So I mix this in to make my perfect shade. It's great. Or I'll mix this in with other concealers under my eyes that are a little bit too dark or not quite as brightening as I'd like them to be. And so I have been multi-purposing this. I have been reaching for this basically every single time that I do my makeup in some capacity, which is great. So. It is getting used, but it is slower going than maybe I would like for it to be. I was hoping that I'd be closer to the goal of finishing it off by now, but it is what it is. I am enjoying it and happy that I'm working my way through it and seeing such great progress on it. Like there's a lot of empty space in that tube and that feels really good. I'm really happy about that. And the last product that I've been focusing on is this one by Ilia. This is the True Skin Radiant Priming Serum. This is a deluxe size mini that came in a like clean at Sephora set from forever ago. So I'm so happy that I finally, finally decided to reach into this. I hadn't even used it on my skin until the day that I filmed my introduction for this project, I believe. Anyways, my goal with this was to finish it off and I have already done that in this first month because there was only 4.5 mils in here. So I think I wore it about 10 times. I really did enjoy the way that this felt on my skin, but I don't think it's something that I actually need in my life. And I remember in the introduction, I was saying I couldn't see through it. Well, I still can't see through it. So just a heads up if anybody has this and they want to work on it in a project pan, 
you cannot see through this even if you have like your light shining into it this is just a completely opaque packaging but besides the point so I wore this many times as an all-over face primer it is like hydrating without feeling overly slick or super oily and it does offer this like slightly tacky kind of feeling and I don't mean that in a negative way it just kind of helps to grip other products on top of it but without it being like super sticky it was very very nice and most recently you'll see there's a bit of darkness like around the edges here most recently ever since I've like completely finished it off as much as I could I have actually just been like dumping this into the lid of my ABH dip brow pomade and just kind of like smacking it into the lid of that product because I accidentally left the lid off one day and so that product has dried out just a little bit not like excessively so but that way I can just pick a little bit of product up on my brush and then run the brush into the lid where there's this little bit of this product in it and kind of mix the two together so it goes on a little bit more smoothly and a little bit more clean and it just is like a bit of a thinner formula that way as well and just a bit more sheer and I've been really enjoying actually just using up every last possible drop of this product in that way. That is so random and so weird, but I thought that was a really good insight in case you do have like a dried up product that you don't necessarily want to mix the entire thing with a face oil or something like that. This was really great to just kind of use on an everyday basis to reinvigorate the product, but I have actually hit my goal on that one, which is amazing. I'm super happy to have finished that off. One more primer out of my collection, which is great. And I am going to be rolling something new in its place. This project, you can have like three to five products at any time. And I'm just going to keep it at that five maximum for now, just because I'm not working on a ton of project pans at the moment. And I just feel like that's a great way for me to keep rotating through my collection. And I have decided that I'm going to implement um, the same sort of like theory that I saw Haley. I'll link her down in the description box. She, when she introduced this project, she said that she's going to do it like half and half with products that she wants to finish up or hit pan on and then the other half will be products that she just wants to set a usage goal on so that we're rotating through our collections a little bit more frequently. It does make these updates potentially a little bit more interesting to have a balance of different products but for me ultimately what I really want to do is ensure that I'm not just fixating on a handful of products in my collection and not using anything else. So I've decided that the new product that I'm going to be rolling in is going to be a usage product and from here on out, I'm going to have three products I'm trying to actually finish up or hit pan on, and then two products that I'm trying to actually just get a certain number of uses on. And I just think that that will be a really great balance for me and for my collection, which is great. And so I've decided that I'm going to put in a brand new eyeliner to my collection. I am wearing it in my waterline today, and I think I've worn it three times since I got this. I did receive this from Look Fantastic, and I had every, every intention of putting this into my shop my stash so that I could get a feel for this product so I can review it for you in the future but in any case this is the high vis eyeliner strobe light by Barry M no high vis eyeliner by Barry M in the shade strobe light this is a beautiful like matte lime green kind of shade and I'm not really familiar with this product and it is new to my collection and like I said I did anticipate I was going to put it into my shop my stash and something happened where I ended up just like completely ignoring this product. I forgot to put it into my shop, my stash. So I think in the month of February, I can just get use out of it in this project pan. So I'd like to use it eight times in this project. That is not a huge goal, but that means like two times per week over in the next month. So I know setting a goal of eight uses is not like the most amazing thing. I'll probably only have to sharpen this maybe one or two times, but it makes sure that I'm actually using this product and I get to know this product and next update I should be able to roll something new in its place. There's no reason that this would be something that I keep in for the month of March as well. So I just want to kind of keep myself motivated and rotating through my collection and this just seems like a really great product to kind of kick that off with. But yeah, that is all five products including the brand new Roland for this project. I cannot wait to see everyone else's updates. I love this project so much. I am so happy to be participating in this year and I cannot wait to see what the future holds with this project. I think for the first few months it's going to look kind of the same but in a few months time we could have an entirely new selection of products and I love that prospect. But that is going to be everything for today's video. Thank you so so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone! Mm -hmm.